Hi, this is pre-calc money spreadsheet assignment. Show me the money. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about part two here and how to set this up. So we've got to give you some background on the random number generator. And then we're going to figure out how to set your uh, growth rate and do a little play on that. Because if I say 10.3%, that's what I'm estimating over the next 10 years. Well, each of those years, it's not going to be that. So we want to see different scenarios that might happen. So let's go to the spreadsheet and show you about the random number generator. First of all, what does it look like? So it's equal rand, and you got to open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and that's what it is. And so I can go control squiggle, and then you see the rand function there, and it returns a number between 0 and 1. Okay, so there's my number between 0 and 1. Whenever I type something in and I enter it, it should change my random number because it keeps on cranking out. So this number here, and uh, if you have a PC, you can go F9 on most of them. And if you go F9, it will automatically change that number, and it will re-randomize. And if you have two random numbers, it will be two different numbers. And so this is useful when we do th some things called randomization. So watch, I push F9. And we want to, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, we're doing modeling and Monte Carlo methods. A great resource for Monte Carlo method is Wikipedia. So you can go here and check out uh, what Monte Carlo methods are in more, more in depth. But really for us, what it is is just using random numbers to make predictions. Okay? And that's what we're going to be doing with our spreadsheet. And so if we go back to our spreadsheet, uh, we're going to generate these numbers between 0 and 1. What that will do is, for each particular year, I'm going to have a different random number. And with that random number, that's going to help me get in a certain range uh, of my 10-year rate that I've been using for my uh, mutual fund that I'm dealing with. So we've got to be able to set this up. Now, if you go to your sheet... Here it says, I'm using 10.3%. Hopefully yours is not 10.3%, but what you're going to do is you're going to put this right in the middle. You could put 0.5 here, but we're not going to use it for any computation, so I didn't put 0.5 there. But at this middle is my 10.3%. Yours will be different. Then what I'm going to do is I made up an arbitrary number here, 15%. So I said, okay, off that 10.3%, maybe my mutual fund will go up 15% more than that in a particular year or less than that, 15% uh, less than that in a particular year. So all I did was took this 10.3, add 15, 10.3, subtract that there. Now with that, what I'm going to say is that when I get a random number, if it shows up to be 1, I'm going to get 25.3% that year. If it turns up to be 0, I'm going to lose 4.7%. And what do I want to have happen anywhere in between when I get a random number between 0 and 1? Well, I want it to equally distribute all the different chances between negative 4.7 and 25.3 that I'm able to get. So what I'm going to do is write a linear equation for this. And so from this, I'm going to take two points. And the 1 is the x-coordinate, this is the y-coordinate. The 0 is the x-coordinate, this one's the y-coordinate. So I get two points. So all I do is I find the slope, which will be 30, which should make sense. That will be the same for all of us. And then we want to write a linear equation for that. So all you do is pick one of these points. I pick this bottom point because it's going to be my y-intercept. And i got to turn it into percents. So I, this actually, I don't like this divided by 100. What you could do is use the decimal representation for these percents in the first place. For instance, 0.253 or 0 0.047 negative. And, and then you don't have to do this divided by 100 here. And your slope here would actually be 0.3. I think I'd prefer that anyways. OK, so then here is. Uh, what you would have. Now I have to put this 1 in here because I'm going to be doing a factor. So let's see how we set up our spreadsheet. First of all you want a random number here. So I'm going to go equals rand. Okay and with that any command I have I can fill down. So if I fill this down I'm going to get all these different random numbers and you can check these different cells. Here's the command that we have and I can go control squiggle. There's all my rands. Then my growth factor, we said, was going to be equal to 1 plus, 
And then I have my equation back on that other sheet again. So my equation is going to be 1 plus, and then I have that right there. So I'll punch that in. So I didn't put in the uh, divided by 100, but I have 0.3 times B6, because I moved this down a little bit more. But I could have made this B5 too. And that would be my growth factor. OK, now look at what happens when I show you the value. So this is a value that's just a little bit over 1. So this means that I grew about 9% in that year. Now if I fill down, then I can see some other representations that end up coming up. Well, that's about 17% growth. Oh, that one's about 4%. That was 8.1 and so on. I don't see any ones where I decrease, though. And so maybe my model's a little bit faulty. Oh, there's one. And so I did F9, which is function 9. If you have a Mac, to change random numbers, all you have to do is maybe go delete and return on some blank spots. And that will change it. Uh, F9 works on some Macs, so. though. And so that gives me different growth factors for any one particular year. And then I can build my spreadsheet like I did before and get my principal and put your headers in and so on. Uh, you also want to make your principal with static growth so that your picture can look like uh, one that has the Monte Carlo method and one that has just static growth. And so, for example, here I have the Monte Carlo in purple and then the static growth, uh, which is has the constant growth every year in the blue. So you can look at different scenarios, what might happen over the course of time. So this is a Monte Carlo method because we're using a simulation and using random numbers to make that simulation, mathematical model. All right, so this should help you with part two. And I'll probably try to make another video for the extension, uh, extension number one, which is an example of what I did after I set this up. Thanks.